And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Sorry about that, technical difficulties. That is why you go live. There's never a dull moment when you go live, okay? That is why. So what I was saying, let's start back from the top. I will edit this out once this live is over with. But today, we are going to talk about three ways to practice better. And because you need to practice. And I, I emailed a lot of y'all. Y'all asked me, hey, could you talk about practicing how to practice, especially with one platoon. That's what we're going to get into. Let's do this again, baby, because that's what we do. Three ways to practice be uh, better. The easy approach to playing the game. So what? We'll <laughs> I still can't believe I messed that up. I I'm sorry. I should have been watching chat. Uh, what we'll cover, why you need a goal for each and every practice, how are there two different practices, and what do you need to do with those practices, playing the game before the game is being played. That is very, very, very important. And then what kind of team are you? Because you have to ask yourself that. A lot of coaches don't really know, especially with one platoon, what kind of uh, team they are. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, stay tuned to the end because I am going to talk about that. All right? Why you need a goal for each practice. Let me move my face out of the way. I'm going to move it right here by Oprah. Uh, what's the purpose for practice? Why are you practicing? Is it for the season? Is your is your whole thing about uh, thank you, Christopher, putting the things in for the season, for the game plan? Or is it for the preseason? Is it for spring and, and fall? I call it fall, summer, where you're installing. Or is the practice for seven on seven? Because a lot of us are getting into seven on seven season. Do we need to practice for the route so we don't look like total butt when we go out there? You need to ask yourself, what is the purpose? That is very, very, very important. Uh, and also, you need to script everything. You need to script your indie. You can't go out there and just freestyle it. You need to script your groups. You can't go out there and freestyle that. And you need to script team. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, there's no ladies here. It's all coaches. Coach, listen, if it's good enough for Nick Saban that he has his assistant coaches script everything, every single minute of every single time, that's what it's supposed to be like. You should be doing that too. And it's very important. Uh, Let's see, Christopher, that's what it's supposed to sound. Tell me you're fat without saying you're fat. No, not at all, man. All right, so before we get into it, I'm watching chat right now. Can you hear me? Is everything working? Let me know. Drop it one or two in the chat just to let me know that you can hear me because I don't want to get into this again because I may just, I'll, I'll just stop. So I'm looking at chat one, one or two. Can you hear me? I'm going to keep going though until I see that. Okay, if I don't see it, then it lets me know, hey, listen, this isn't the thing. Here's how you do things. Okay, good. Thank you, table. This is how you do things. For Indy, you should have a handful of drills that you're going to do. Now, those drills should also show up in your group. And then from that group, everything you do in group should show up in team. If you don't have that scaffolding, you are scaffolding, I'm sorry. You are not doing it right. You are not scripting. You need to do that. In every single thing that you do, your position should have an outcome. So what I'm talking about is, let's say, for instance, quarterbacks. You go out there and be like, hey, QBs, I want to have a 60% rate completion rate today. Or if you're DBs, hey, DBs, as a group, I want to get six pass breakups. Or as offensive linemen, hey, guys, I want six pancakes or six knockdowns. Whatever it is, your group, your position group should have a goal. This does two things. One, it has everybody on the same vision working towards something during practice from the from top dog to slappy of slappies. They're all working toward one vision. And then two, it also makes practice purposeful. Like you can you can tie these in. Hey, if we don't complete 60%, every percentage point under that, we're going to do five push-ups. Now they have a goal to attain. Or if you're D lineman, hey guys, I want three sacks today during team. I know you're not supposed to touch the uh, hit the quarterback, but slap him on the butt. If we don't get three of those, we're going to be doing six sprints. This gives them something to look forward to and make sure that everybody is working their hardest at that practice. Because let's call a spade a spade. Sometimes you just have sandwich wanters and, and you know jersey holders out there at practice. Well, if they're not feeling a part of practice, they can bring it down. Bring everybody in on the same goal. Everybody can do it. It's very important that you do this. There are two different types of practices, okay? There's the install season, and then there's regular season. Each practice is different. What do I mean by that? Well, installs, you are going to be, I'm going to move my face right now, you are going to be working on installing your offense whether this is spring or the fall, summer. You're working on reps. You're working on getting players used to the plays. Maybe you're talking about the nuances inside of those plays, like, hey, 
when we're running uh, Y across, you can sit it here, you keep going there. This is where they learn over and over again what we're doing. That is different than from the season. When you get into the season and the practices, you are now focusing on the game plan. What can we do to make sure that we are the best of the best during the season? You're focusing on working situations. Hey, today, on Mondays, it's third downs. On Tuesdays, we're working going in. On Wednesdays, we're working from backed up, coming out. You can work the whole field, the bandit drill, the air raid does. You're, you're not restraining or restricting yourself during the season from only running a handful of plays. You're now taking that same philosophy, but you're applying it to certain sections of the field. And that way you're getting reps still, but now you're repping the field so that when it comes time for the game, you're not going, what the hell do I call? Where do we go from here? What do we do? You've already done that in practice, and this ties into the next thing. The bonus tip also, once you do that, or once you know what you're envisioning for the season, try to make your install practices feel as much as season practices as possible. What do I mean by that? We're still only working on a handful of plays, but move it around. Like, let's say, for instance, it's it's four verts. You don't have to run four verts just in the middle of the field. You can run it backed up. You can run it going in, trying to get good at running four verts from the five-yard line in like Leach. You can do different things. You can move the ball all over the field. Try to get them used to what seasons are going to look like by dipping your toe into it during the install practices. It's very important that you do that. And also, it breaks up the monotony of spring to summer. You know, there's that lull, April or May to uh, some of us to the end of August. That's a stretch where we're not really playing against other people, just ourselves. How can we break that up so that it's always energetic, always fun, and do everything like that? That's something you have to ask yourself. Playing the game before the game. Practice should be about, especially during the season, playing the game before the game. This is where you can steal reps. Most coaches I have talked to, let me move myself out of the way again. Come on, Patrick. Most coaches I talk to, they just roll the ball out there and they just run plays. That's all they do. They're not scripting anything. They're just in the middle of the field running plays. If that's you, I'm judging I'm judging a little bit. You have to ask yourself why. Why are you doing that? And because there's a mental block on it. Maybe that's the way you practice, maybe that's the boss before you did things, but that is not the way you should be doing that. Practice should be a dress rehearsal. You should script everything. Script down at distances, scripting hashes. Uh, side note, if you are running plays in the middle of the field, you're doing you and your team a disservice. You need to run from the hashes. Why is that? 70 to 75% of the time, you are calling plays on either the left hash or the right hash, both offensively and defensively. So if I come to your practice and I look at your practice field and there's dead grass in between the hashes, you're doing it wrong. There should be dead grass on the hashes, not in the middle. So you need to do that. If you don't take away one thing, you just take away that. I'm going to start this season running plays on the hashes, never in the middle of the field. Both your offense and defense will get better, and this video was worth it. You should script your red zones. You shouldn't be running red zone plays on the day of the game. You should be scripting those out during the week. Same thing with backed up. You don't want to have your butthole this tight when it comes time for to run plays from the backed up. You should know what you're going to run before you even get in that situation. And if you do uh, shot plays, I know a lot of us are kind of moving toward shot plays. Um, you need to have a period for that. And you need to work on it over and over again. I know Chad Morris, I know he gets a lot of hate now, but he would script it. Hey, when we hit this yard mark on this hash, this is what we're running. And he would have a five-minute period where he would work on that all the time. It's over and over again, okay? Beautiful thing about this also is after you do a week's worth of practices in the season, playing the game before the game, and you have your structure ready, Monday we do this, Tuesday we do this, Wednesday we do this, you're done for the rest of the year because you're saving yourself brain power because you've already done it. All you have to do is tweak the script just a little bit, and now you can take that brain power that you were going to waste on uh, scripting practice, creating a new practice plan every single week. You can now put that to something else. Maybe it's watching film. Maybe it's teaching your players how to get better. Maybe it's just, I don't have to worry about that, so I can actually spend time with my family when I'm there instead of letting my mind wander on football. Those are the things you can do once you systematize and simplify your practice. All right? And just a plug right here, I have I go more in-depth on this, uh, really deep. This is probably one of the, the best things I've done. It's a mini workshop. You can go right there, thefootballsecrets.com slash perfectpractice. It's over two hours, a mini workshop. You have all of the downloads that I talk about. I dive in a bunch of stuff. 
This is the best thing I have done in a very long time. If you want to get more in depth on that, that is where you will go. And you have to ask yourself, what kind of team are you? Very important, especially one platoon teams. Uh, are you defensive focus or offensive focus? Or do you just say, I don't care. We're going to be the best of the best on both sides, and we're going to practice for five hours. The reason why I ask you that question, because it, what you do, what you decide you're going to focus on, either more on offense or more on defense, this is just one platoon now, okay? You're going to de- you're going to divert more attention to that. So if I'm offensive focused, then I'm going to do a lot more on Mondays, not so much on Tuesdays. On Wednesdays, I'm going to do a lot more. I'm going to flip that if I'm defense. And how I structure things, it's going to depend on what I decide what I'm going to do. Here's very important, though. Pick one and live with it. Don't pick one on one week and say I'm offensive focused, and the next week we aren't that good on offense, so now we're going to switch it to defense, and next week we're going to be more defensive focused and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You're doing your kids a disservice. You're not getting great at the little things on what focus you are. Pick one and live with it, and be great at a handful of things. This goes both offensively and defensively. Pick a handful of things. I'm going to do this on offense, and we're going to get great at it. Or I'm going to be this on defense, and I'm going to be great at it. Stop saying you're going to be the next Alabama or the next Ohio State or the next Clemson, uh, Baylor, whatever it is. You be you. You pick a handful, whatever it is. Learn a system in and out and just run with it. Stop being wishy-washy. And keep practice fun. Man, it is a grind. Burnout is real, both for coaches and for players. So if you can keep things under two hours, if you can keep things tightly scripted, if you can keep things systematized so that you're not worried about what you were doing or anything like that, it helps with the burnout. It helps you as a coach get back to your family and just be with them in the moment. It's very important that you do that. Keep the burnout to a minimum. So let's recap, okay? Again, if this is any good, please give me a thumbs up. Let's me know, Ron, keep this up and keep the sound on because, you know, that last one you were into it, but you didn't have the sound on, you big dum-dum. Every practice should have goals. What gets measured gets improved, and that's every single group should have a goal for every practice as well. Uh, there are two different practices throughout the season. There's an install practice, and that is from spring until fall of summer, quote-unquote, and then there's the season practice. Uh, Play the game before the game is played. Always play the game so that your players and coaches are comfortable with the game plan. And you know as a play caller, and your players know that you as a play caller, know what you're going to call based on where the situation is, based on where you're at on the field and everything like that. If you want a deeper dive into this and how to run the perfect practice, check out that link right there. It's in the description as well. It'll be the first pinned comment. And then you have to ask yourself, what kind of team are you? Offensive focus or defensive focus? And whichever one you are, you freaking live with it. So thank you all for being here. I'm going to go through the comments now. I, I appreciate it. Sorry about the, the technical difficulties. Willie, what's going on? Table, what's up? Ethan, there's an easier approach to using a mic. I don't know what it is, man. This road mic, so when I somehow, it just it messes up. But I, I'm sorry. That's why we go live, baby. As teachers, monitor and adjust. Christopher, that was supposed to say sound. Tell me you're fat without saying you're fat. You're not fat at all, man. The only thing fat on you is your butt. P-H-A-T, pretty hot and tempting. <laughs> Someone tell me what movie that's from. Uh, table, yes, yes. Ian, what's going on? Birdwell, Coach. Coach Leach had a good talk on practice organization at a re, uh, recent clinic. I need to hear that, man. I want to. Uh, Ethan, my school counts quarterback completions with pitch counters. It's awesome how competitive they can get. That's that's beautiful. That's what you need to do. You need This goes for every group. You need to have a unified goal every practice to make things fun even for you, if you're a position coach, it gets boring after your indies, especially if you're like a running back coach. After and I'm talking from personal experience. Running back coach, I was juiced for indies. Then when we got the team and group, I didn't have a say in anything. So I'm sitting there just like twiddling my thumbs. But if we have a goal that we can go toward, now I'm engaged in practice. And if I'm engaged in practice, I can make sure my kids are engaged in practice. Uh, Ian checking in from North Carolina. Heck yeah, man. Jake. I haven't heard about Mike Lee trying to four verts from the five. That sounds it. He's done it a couple of times, man. You can see it on games. They run it. And if anything, it works on the back shoulder throws. That's very important, especially down there. If we were down the five yard line, if we want to throw back shoulders, when are we going to do that? One on one suck. But what if you called four verts on the five yard line and just have your guy work on back shoulder throws? That's the way to play the game before the game. Uh, Clinton doesn't hurt to get overly excited and break a clipboard when the players run something that. Yeah, man, it's awesome. It is awesome. Nothing is better than when you call a play, they run it to, ex- to perfection, and then they score. Because then you could say, hey, look what happens when we run things to perfection. 
we score. Evan, what's going on from gym class? Heck yeah, man. Get that workout in, baby. Uh, last I heard of Chad Morris, he was going to be the head coach at SMU. I don't think I don't know. He's now coaching in Texas at a high school. So that's what it is. Thanks, Coach Mackey. Money talks. Vic, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, finally called a live. Hey, I'm going to start going Tuesdays at 12, 1230. So put it on the calendar. Sending it your way. Heck yeah, man. Would it be good to do these things at a brand new, at a new school and style of brand? Yes, absolutely, Otis. Heck yeah. I mean, it's a better way to introduce it. They know nothing. You've got a clean slate. Work on it. So I appreciate y'all being here. Thank you so much. If you want to dive deeper into this, um, make sure to check out this right here, footballsecrets.com slash perfect practice. The link is in the description below. And until next time, let's continue to master the spread, score points, and have fun. And I promise the sound will be on. All right, see y'all.